Imagine now, you have a hot potato. And this hot potato, when you hold it in your hands, is like a burning coal. So, one individual throws a hot potato into a group and leaves. One individual catches, then he, he throws to someone else, then someone else catches, and he throws to someone else. Nobody wants to hold the hot potato. Nobody wants to put up with it, nobody wants to deal with it. But at the same time, the hot potato is something they can't avoid. So now there's a fight going on to get relief from the hot potato. And let's say that there is this young boy, or let's say young girl, this young child that comes in. And now the hot potato is forced in the hands of that kid. The kid throws it away, but then they smack the kid and tells the kids to take the hot potato and the kid for some reason accepts it because well what choice does, does the kid have so the natural uh, response of the kid to avoid to toxicity and avoid harm is suppressed why because nobody wants to deal with the hot potato now if if a game like this would take place if you teenagers throwing a hot potato and they would force the hot potato on a kid, if this would happen out there, people would call the cops and those teenagers would face jail time. Why? Because it's a child, when a child holds a hot potato, it's harmful to their hands, to their health. And if something like that would happen and the, and the teenager would, would get jail time, we would agree with it because we'd say you shouldn't do that to a kid. Now what if I tell you that this scenario with this hot potato is what society really is? Let me explain it. People in a certain in a geographic location, let's say in a town or a village or in a, what we call a country. By the way, countries are fictive constructions, but you're already aware of that, I hope. Let's say you have people in a region. They need to interact with one another. In order to make interactions work, in order to exchange goods and services, in order to get their needs met, to transport food, water, maintain the roads. So people need to be able to be in some kind of collective agreement with one another. Okay, that's obvious. There's nothing wrong with that. People need to be able to communicate. That's why we develop language with symbols and we attach meanings to symbols. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that either. But here's another thing. People are born in a fallen state. Which means that people operate in duality. In likes versus dislikes. People are, are at relief centers. That's how people are. Because we are people are born in sin. That's why the most I wants us to become born again. So that after we are born again, we are renewed in our mind so that we are, we are Christ-centered, not relief-centered. But look at this. When you have a group of people, whether it's just three people or 1,000 people or a million people, when you have a group of people that are all relief-centered, that is going to cause a lot of trouble. Why? Simply because relief-centeredness is anti-life. Relief centeredness is an unreal way of thinking. But because it's a default way that people operate, we can't see it for the unreal, from the unreality that it is. So when you have a group of people who are relief centered, they want to avoid discomfort at all costs and want, and want to hold, exploit and hold on to relief, what they call comfort or the comfort zone, when you have that. People are already trapped without them being aware they are, they are trapped. So when discomfort manifests, people want to get rid of it. But their resistance against what they perceive as discomfort is going to cause more strain and more negative energy. So after a while, what's going to happen to all that negative energy and all that contention? Nobody wants to put up with it. But however, in order to continue in relief centeredness, they need to find a way to successfully get rid of the toxic energy that that relief centeredness is producing. 
and that's what society is. It's a collective avoidance of negative energy by holding on to relief. That's what society is. We may think that society is something else. It's not true. So society is really a collective escape mechanism. But when you say this, people will tell you, man, you're negative minded or you need some help. But when you look at the bigger picture, that is exactly what society is. I mean, okay, let me give a common illustration. You have a young woman that comes from a broken household and she has some bad thinking and she needs help. Why do we have institutions to help people? Why can't the regular Joe out there just not, how do I say it, look after their own? Why? Because people want relief. They want people around that are respectful. And what do we mean with respectful? We want people that validate our expectations and make us at ease at all times. That's what people want. People don't want to face reality. That during this lifetime there is going to be discomfort. There are going to be things that you need to endure. There are something like this. Through our fallen mind, we, we divide reality in pluses and minuses. The plus are the outcomes, the relief you want to hold on to. And, the, and by holding on to that relief, we fight against the minus. But this division, this duality of the minus and the plus, this duality of yes and no, good or bad, this duality does not exist. Uh, the pain and the contention that people have by resisting the minus, that doesn't exist. That pain, that contention is real. That's how it works out in violence. Whether it's internal violence that, that operates in, that works out as addictions or, or suicidal tensions, or it's external violence in the form of cruelty, genocide, wars, terrorism, crime in itself. The outwork of negative energy is a real thing. But a thing that people resist that framework is not real. So, this is a situation worldly people are in. And they can't afford to look at the bigger picture because if they would look at the bigger picture, it would destroy their attachment to the plus. Because they will realize that the plus is only a plus because there's a minus that is resisted. And the minus is only a minus because there's a plus that's offended. So it's a trap, but it's a trap most people can't see. Whether it is an autocratic society like North Korea or a so-called land of the free, the United States, the same thing is going on. People want relief and to sustain this relief, they join other people who are chasing the similar relief as they are. That's all relief sentiments. Once under the flag of what we call the United States with 50 stars and 13 stripes. 13 lines, I mean. And the other is a flag with a star in it. But when you look at it from the wider perspective, it's just relief sentiments act out collectively. Are there differences? Of course, there are differences. But those differences are only variations of relief sentiments. It isn't anything else. However, most people can't see this. And they really, when it comes down to it, they don't want to see it. Why? Because everything they've ever done, everyone they've ever cut off, everyone they hooked up with, every reason they ever had, every will they ever pushed into, every boundary they ever made, every boundary they ever defended, every no they ever said was based on relieved sentiments. And when this is revealed for the lie it is, what happens to all their investments? That's why it's important to be renewed in your mind so that you're Christ-centered, not relief-centered. Well, that being said, be at peace.